Coin Collectors and welcome to the DC Coin World International Coin Channel. Today we're going to examine the 1953 one shilling coin, the first Queen Elizabeth coin ever. And of course 1953 was the year of her coronation and so let's t talk about how we can figure out which ones are 1953 coins just from looking at the front. And if we look right at the front, of course, there's not going to be a year on the front of a one shilling coin, right? Not not the Queen Elizabeth one shilling coins. There's no year on the front. This one here says Elizabeth II, Dia Gracia, Regina. Elizabeth II, by the grace of God, Queen. And we have this um, pearled or dotted outer rim. Um, and we see that it's the Mary Gillick first portrait of the Queen. So that's a good sign, right? The first portrait of the Queen to be on money was the Mary Gillick portrait, this one with the laureate and the ribbons coming out the back. Just a beautiful, uh, really simple um, portrait that just really captures uh, the Queen at that time. Now, of course, she was a very young woman at that time. And so in 1953, when they first came out uh, with the one shilling coins, um, well, it's been a while. Let's just say that. It's been 67 years since the one shilling coin came out. Now, if you look at this one, it's a little different. This one says Elizabeth II, Elizabeth II, Dia Gracia. This one says Dia Gracia. But then see how it starts over here? And this is where it gets, uh, you can define them. See where it says Brit Omn? There's no Brit Omn on here. Queen of all Britons, that's B-R-I-T-T-O-N-S, or Queen of all Brittany, you might call it, or Queen of all Great Britain, Regina is the queen part. So on this one, it doesn't have the Brit on, um, this one it does. And that's because in the coronation year, they put the Queen of all Britons on the coin, and after that, they did not. So if we look at this coin, we can see that it has a Brit on on it, and that's how we can tell from the front that this is a 1953, the only year they put the Brit on, on there. Now, the Mary Gillick portrait doesn't tell us anything because Mary Gillick portrait was on the front of the uh, one shilling coins from 1953 until 1970 when they stopped making them. So this one is not, so we know if we turn this over, it won't be a 1953, what will it be? Uh, this is a 1966, so this one uh, is not a Mary Gillick, um, it's not a Mary Gillick Brit Om portrait. Okay, this one here, uh, this is a Brit Om, okay. Uh, this one here, no Brit Om on here, so that's out. Uh, this one here, Brit Om. Okay, so let's look at the back of this one also. All right, look at that. So this is, says Fid Def on the top, Defender of the Faith, one shilling at the bottom. We have a 19 here, and then we have the Scottish shield, and then we have, or the standing lion for Scotland, it's crowned, and it says 53. So 19, Scottish shield, 53. So we know this is a 53. We know this is a 53 because it has a Brit Omn on it. So let's flip this one over too. Ah, and isn't that weird? One of the things we need to remember about the one shilling coins is that they had two different backs on them. They had the English back, which is, in this case, the lion supon or lying down. There's one, two, three lions on there. Can you see them? Just a really fine um, engraving here. So there's a lion, a lion, a lion. 19 separated by the shield of 53. Of course, it's crowned still. We have these little, they're not really Florida Lees, but they're little, uh, those type of designs. And then we have a W here and a G here. And that's for the engraver, William Maving Gardner, who engraved these coins. And let's see if we can see that on the Scottish Shield. We also have the W and the G, the 1953. So if we make them a little bit smaller and look at them both, we can clearly see the difference between the Scottish Shield. And this is the crown lion. See, he actually has a crown on, or he or she. Well, kind of does. Has a Florida Lee crown. And then... This one over here with the three lines lying down. Now, so we know this is a 1953. We know there's two versions of the 1953. And if any of you have ever looked for the 1952 coin, uh, you'll notice that it's not available. They did not make any coins in 1952. And of course, 1952, the year 
that Queen Elizabeth's father died, George VI. So what did the prior coin look like? Well, let's pull out a 1951 coin. Uh, let's pull out a 1951 coin. Uh, here's one. 1951. Oh, so they actually changed the back for Queen Elizabeth also. So I'm not sure if, if everybody knew that. So let's take a look. So this is the Scottish shield back from George VI in 1951. So you see 19 separated by the Scottish lion, crouching lion, essentially, holding the scepter and the sword and the 51. The shield here, of course, there's a Scottish thistle and kind of the Union Jack. The crown he's on top of it says fid def the top one shilling. Big difference. We still have the fid def. We still have the centerpiece, but it's a different centerpiece. We do have it se se <laughs> separated by the date. And of course, it does say one shilling on the back. These coins are the exact same size and the exact same weight, and they have the exact same reeded edge. So we know that in 51, uh, between 51 and 53, when the Queen Elizabeth coins came out, they changed the back. Did they change the back of this one too? Well, let's take a look. They sure did. So the the English lying down lions in 1951 was, was this English crowned lion standing on top of a crown. So here's Scotland, here's England, here's the 51. The front, of course, on both were the same. And that's, of course, George VI, DG, by the grace of God. Ah, but he had the Brit Omni on all his coins. So he was king of all Britons on all of his coins. It wasn't just during the coronation year. Now, this coin did not last very long. When we look at this coin, this coin only went from 1949 to 1951. And there's a reason for that. And that is because in 1948, so let's flip this over. In 1948, India was still part of the United Kingdom or Great Britain. And India was always uh, noted on the coins. So this one, if you look at this one, it says Fid Def, of course. Then it says Indim, Imperator or Emperor of India. So in 1948, they made, they finished with this coin. They came out with this coin, these backs in 1949 to 51. And prior to 1948, in 1946, they made another change. So one of the reasons that collectors almost can never find the 1946 and before one shilling coins is because in 1946, they came out with the British Currency Act and they changed the coins. And what they did was in 1945, the coins were 50% silver. So 1945 and before. So if you find a win one shilling before 1946, it's going to be silver, half silver. In 1946, they moved to 75% copper and 25% nickel. The problem is that they weigh exactly the same thing. So you have to look at the year date. Before 1946, half silver worth some money, worth a lot more money. After 1946, 75% um, copper or 25% nickel. All right, so that's enough for the George VI. So let's look at the Queen Elizabeth ones. Now, Queen Elizabeth, um, so she had Queen Elizabeth on the front. She had Brit Om on all the first year ones. And then after that, they t took the Brit Om off. And so this is a 1954. And of course, now you know this is the English Shield 1954 without the Brit Om on it. And what they did was, you can see, they actually made the letters bigger and spread them out a little bit more. Um, and they essentially uh, moved them closer to the center. So this portrait, still a Mary Gillick portrait. Now, I said that this portrait um, stayed until 1970, and, and it did. And so let's look at the 1971 shillings. And here's a couple of them. Here's the problem with these, and you're going to say, why are they so shiny? And, of course, I want to show you that it's still a Mary Gillick portrait in 1970. Uh, why are they so shiny? The English, I mean, the English shield, the Scottish shield. Well, they're so shiny because in 1970, they only produced these in a non-circulating 
proof or brilliant uncirculated condition. And that's how you can see they're just beautiful coins, but they weren't general circulation coins, but they made them the same. Now that's weird. And why do I say that's weird? Because prior to 1970, they had already started to change the British coins. And let me show you one right here. This is one from 1968, and it doesn't have the Mary Gillick portrait. I thought that you know, one of the things I told you was that the one shillings from 1953 until 1970 all had the Mary Gillick portrait. And I just showed you a 1970 and has the Mary Gillick portrait. So what happened here? Why do we have the Arnold Machen portrait on the coin? Well, that's because in 1968, Britain started to embrace um, decimalization of the British coins, and they changed it from being 240 pence to the pound to 100 pence to the pound. And so in 1968, before they even stopped making the one shilling coins, they came out with one that was the same size, the same weight. And if we tip these up and look, I think we can see that they're almost exactly the same reeded edge, almost exactly the same spacing between the reeds. See how we can follow these reeds across and they continue to match each other all the way around. So they came out with a coin in 1968, which is really weird. At the same time, they were already making the one shilling with a different portrait on it, but it wasn't a one shilling. It was a five new pence. And if we look at the five new pence, we see something interesting on it. It says new pence on the top, the five, and there's the crowned Scottish thistle on the back. And this is the only back they ever put on the five new pence coin. They did not put on an English and Scottish back. It was only the Scottish thistle on the five new pence. But they took the old shields off. And so you get quite a difference here. And you also see the pearled. See how this is more of a geared? This is more of a pearled. So they changed it up almost completely. They put a new Arnold Machen. And so Arnold Machen, second portrait, coexisted with the Mary Gillick first portrait until 1990. If you can imagine that, these coins both stayed in circulation until 1990, until December 31st, 1990, at which time they stopped making the new pence and they made it straight to a five pence coin. And they wanted to make it really clear that you couldn't use these anymore. And so the way that they did that was to introduce this coin. So this is the five pence coin that came out in 1990. And the, this is another weird fact. These three also coexisted. This was a 1990 coin, but these were good until December 31st, 1990. So for that year or part of that year, whenever this one came out, these ones were still good, but they no longer were good after 1990. And that was the small five pence coin. And so you see on the five pence here, it says five pence. They took the new off and put a five in they made it much smaller and they got rid of the old five pence coin and they got rid of the Mary Gillick portrait and they moved on to the new five pence coin with only this portrait. And does anybody know what this particular portrait is? Well, this is not the Ian Rank Broadley portrait see there. It's not the Arnold Machen. Oh, or is it? So this is the Raphael David McClough portrait. See the RDM right there? So in 1990, when they came out, they not only skipped from this portrait to this portrait, they also skipped right over the, the Arnold Machen portrait. Oh, and this is a weird coin. I'm not even sure what this one is. This is, oh, this isn't from United Kingdom. Uh, so in some of the United Kingdom countries, what they did was they actually went straight to dollar style coins. So this is the Eastern Caribbean states. This is in 87, but well before this, they went to the dollar. So in Australia, 
New Zealand, the East, Eastern Caribbean states, Belize, a number of other countries, they used a dollar and they actually had 25 cents coins. They never went to the five new pence. All right, what was one other thing that we should know about the one shilling and the five, um, the five new pence? And that is that the five new pence was worth exactly the same as the one shilling. And I'm almost done, so if you want to hang on just a little bit longer. This coin, the one shilling coin, was one twentieth of a pound. The five new pence was one twentieth of a new pound. So five to a hundred on this one, and five uh, and twenty to two hundred and forty on this one. These were both worth exactly the same uh, value to the pound, which was one twentieth of a pound. All right, kind of long-winded, but I love doing this. Uh, we'd love to have you subscribe to our channels, the DC Coin World International Coin Channel and the United Kingdom Coin World Channel. And please leave any comments you have in the comments section.